You're listening to episode number four of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. Thank you for joining me today. And today I am absolutely so excited for this episode because for a few reasons. First of all, we have a very special guest today. On the show today, we have Heather Dick and Heather is a fellow stepmom. She is a business owner. And another reason that I'm also excited for this podcast is because over the last little while, I have had quite a few stepmoms coming to me because their stepchildren or maybe their kids have a unique set of medical needs and they're not really sure how to incorporate this additional level of medical needs into their step family. So one of the things that makes Heather's journey so unique is that she is no stranger to having stepchildren with medical needs. And so I would invite you to listen to this entire episode because Heather has such a beautiful perspective and she has so much love and so much compassion and she's done so much healing and so much growth on her journey. So if this is you, even if this isn't you, even if your stepkids or your kids do not have medical needs, Heather still drops a ton of pearls of wisdom throughout our time together. Before we jump in, as always, I'm going to give you the heads up that we do swear a couple of times in this episode. So if you're listening in the car with little ears around and you don't want to hear swearing, now is your chance to come back later. Second of all, because this was my first episode recording with another microphone, the sound quality isn't as great as I would have hoped it would have come out. So knowing that, I appreciate your understanding. I appreciate you being here with me as I learned the ropes of podcasting. And thank you for your understanding. We're going to dive right in and I hope that you love it. Where would you take your life if you knew you could not fail? I get it. As a stepmom, mom, mom, and entrepreneur, sometimes it can feel like what everyone else expects of you versus what you dream about for yourself are on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a woman, you're taught from a very young age what society thinks you're worth based on how you look, how you behave, and how much money you're allowed to bring in. But I'm here to show you that you can be the woman who has it all and not just on the outside. I'm Brittany Lynch, and you are the queen of your castle. Welcome to episode number four of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. I am your host, Brittany Lynch, and I am so excited to bring to you one of my very favorite people in the whole entire world. Today, we have a very special guest, and her name is Heather Dick, and Heather is a fellow stepmom, and she is here to share her experience, strength, and hope with all of you beautiful listeners out there. Crying already. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not crying. You're You're crying. crying. Heather is here to share her experience, strength, and hope with you and all of every stepmom out there. Um, Heather has a very unique and very special journey, and I'm so grateful that she is here, also serving you wherever you are listening. So, without further ado, Heather, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Here I am. Here you are. Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, good, good. Um, So, I guess, Heather, if you could just let our listeners know. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? What do you love? Give us, give us, give us the rundown of who is Heather. Who I am. Okay, so um, my name is Heather. I'm 34. I am. I'm a business owner. I am a. We'll call it pseudo wife because we're not officially married. Um, I guess by law we are. We've been together for long enough. Um, so I'm married. I have uh, two beautiful stepdaughters, uh, 15 and 12. And I have two dogs, two cats, um, a booming business, which has rapidly grown over the past six years. It's unbelievable, actually, how fast it's grown. Um, you know, I really, I really like to surround myself with people that are driven, but they're kind. And, uh, you know, they have a, a peaceful aspect to them. You know, grounded is, is something that I really, really value in people. You know, when you meet someone and... You think, man, I'd love to be around that person. Mm-hmm. Um, I really try to find those people. Mm-hmm. Um, the The girls on on my team will show that too. Actually, the girls that work for me, they all kind of have a similar vibe. You know, we're all we're fun, um, but but sweet and kind and funny and all of those things. Um, you know, with my life over the past 
even 10 years, but six years I've been with Cameron, um, it's changed night and day myself. I've changed. I mean, I was 27 when I met him. Mm -hmm. Um, and you learn so much going through that time of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've grown together. Cameron's, I mean, he's really smart. So he's, I feel like he lived a lifetime before me already. I'm sure lots of second moms, you know, second wives feel that way, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what I, that's, I would say I would ident- I identify as that. I, I'm a lover of love. I love being around happy people. I love it. I love, you know, when you're at a hockey game and you just see all these happy people and you, the energy that draws or a music festival or something like that, it's just so addictive. And, and I love to try to be that for someone. And I like to take that in. Mm-hmm. If I can, if I can be around people that make me feel energized and make me feel happy, mm-hmm. there's a lot of power in that. And I would, I would guess, I would speculate, you know, knowing you and knowing a little bit about your business, I would speculate that that is why your business has been so successful mm-hmm. is because you show up in the world with an open heart in how you can serve others instead of what is the expectation about what other people can give to me. Right. And I wonder how much of that has changed from, you know, when you said, you know, when you're 27 years old, you met your partner Cameron and you said you've had this big shift over this last six years. And I'm wondering if you can maybe touch on your experience of, you know, when you first became a stat mom, mm-hmm. was the expectation that everyone else was there to serve you or was the expectation that you were there to serve others? I've never personally had that, um you're here for me, but I know a lot of people in my life say that the world revolves around Heather. So, which I think is funny. It's more of a joke than it is anything, but, um, I certainly don't walk in a room thinking that they need to serve me. What I, when I first started living with Cameron, which means that, you know, him and his girl, we all started living together. Um, I felt I was there to make it the best experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, I knew that they were coming over on Friday. Oh, the minute they left the two Sundays ago, I would be starting to plan what else I could do. Mm-hmm. Where can I take them? What can I make? What can I show them? I want to teach them this. I want to do this. I want to do all of these things. And I want to, um, and they have a wonderful mom. They love their mom so much. They're not missing that aspect. And it's not like I felt like I had to be that mom. I just put that pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. Cameron never made me feel like I had to do anything but be myself, but I myself did. Mm -hmm. I need to show up. So what specifically would you do? What kinds of, you know, I said you planned activities or did whatever from the Friday till the Sunday they were coming. What specifically were you doing that you felt like you were being in that way, showing up in that way? So I would, um, you know, we all love Pinterest, but I would like go Pinterest hard. So I mean, it was Valentine's day and I'm, we're making heart shaped pizzas and we're making, you know, Valentine's day cupcakes and we're making this, we're making that, we're making this. And then I remember leaving on Sunday and being like, man, that didn't get the best result. Like I, they have fun, of course. But when they looked at these heart shapes, pizza, heart shaped pizzas that I spent three hours making this crust over, they said, why do these look funny? And it wasn't because they don't care. They, it, I just put so much weight on these small little things. Mm-hmm. And when it didn't have this huge grand result, I was crushed. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And Cameron would say to me, you're, you're trying too hard, Heather. Mm-hmm. Trying way too hard. They're just kids. Mm-hmm. What was your expectation? Like if you, so you'd go and you'd make these heart shaped pizzas, say. So you'd make a heart-shaped pizza. What was your expectation of how you thought they should respond to that kind gesture versus, like you said, they don't care, they're kids, whatever. Like what was, if you could paint a picture in your mind, because I'm sure that you did, most people paint pictures in their mind about what things are supposed to look like. Mm. So what did you think they were going to, how did you think they were going to respond to those kinds of things that left you feeling let down when they didn't get that to that place? You know, I... Because I was very new to them and they were very new to me. I was hoping for that immediate relationship, that immediate attachment. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to want me Mm -hmm. because I wanted to be in their life so, so badly. I wanted to be um, just a great person in their life. And they don't need a mom. They don't need a dad. So I'm like in this like weird limbo spot. 
So with these, these activities, I was hoping that I could build some sort of like relationship or this bond with these things, but not everyone holds acts of gratitude in the same spot, especially kids. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the five love languages, that's what I'm talking about. Some people don't care if they get a present, right? They want someone to shovel the walk for them. Right. And what I wanted from these girls when I made this stuff was like, not like, Oh my God, that pizza tastes delicious. I wanted it to be like, Oh my God, Heather, let's do this again. Let's do this again. I can't wait to see you again. I wanted them to rush through that door and give me the biggest bear hug. Mm -hmm. Like they have been waiting to see me this whole time. That's so far from being realistic. Right. It's unbelievable. Right. And so I, I painted this picture in my head and every time this picture wouldn't come to fruition, I was just getting weaker and weaker and weaker and, and sadder and sadder. Cause I was like, this isn't what I expected. Mm hmm. So most stepmoms, most stepmoms, from my experience, feel like there's this moment in time that's kind of like the TSN turning point mm. where you're like, what I'm doing isn't working. Mm. Either my relationship is suffering with my partner, my relationship is suffering with myself, my relationship is suffering with my stepchildren, I'm shitting the bed at work, I'm doing something that is out of character for me because I'm investing all of my energy into this step family. And so I wonder when you say this like kind of spiraled and you just kept feeling, feeling sadder and sadder, where was this TSN turning point for you when you were like, okay, this super step momming thing is not working. Something has to change. Something has to give. I have to start showing up for myself. Was there a moment in time or was it kind of gradual? Did something happen? You know what I used to do when we had the girls, cause we would have them every other weekend when Cameron wasn't working out of town and then uh, sometimes during the weekend or during the week. And I would, I would plan out my life for when we had the girls. So I wouldn't go out for dinner with friends. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take clients. I wouldn't work. I would do all of these things. I was taking myself away out of my life because I was, well, what, you know, I want to be there. I don't want to miss out. I want to, I want to experience all of these things with my family. Um, not only is that not realistic that I'm losing money, mm -hmm. I'm losing my friends. Not that I didn't lose my friends, but you know, I'm losing friend time. Sure. It's not realistic. And so there was one time, you know, I can't remember the specifics, but I remember saying like, I was like, Cameron, you know, like I feel like every time we have the girls, I have something going on. And he's like, Heather, you don't need to feel guilty. First of all, it's Cameron's job to watch his kids. Mm -hmm. He's got them always. I never think he doesn't. So why do I feel like it's not okay if I'm there or not there? Why do I feel like I always have to be around in order to have value? Mm -hmm. So I started to look at the quality of time. So on a Friday night from 7 to 9, let's say we just bed out on the couch and watch TV, I could be spending that time at my book club. I could be going out for dinner. I could be whatever, go to yoga. Um... And there was a shift Cameron had told, had would tell me, you, you don't need to feel guilty. So you stop feeling guilty, you know, like he is so patient and he's just so kind and he's intelligent beyond anything I can describe truly. Um, and he was patient with me. And so it was like, all of a sudden he said it to me for the last time because then I'd listened. Mm -hmm. You're right. I need to stop trying so hard and I need to stop feeling guilty and I need to just live my life. Mm -hmm. And then all of these people that are around me will all just like incorporate, like we're stirring a pot. Mm -hmm. It'll just all meld together and we'll just make this, this happy family that's just coexisting together in peace and love and happiness instead of forcing 100%. these things to happen. 100%. And it was freeing. It was like, man, whew, I can breathe. Absolutely. I don't, I don't have to look at when I'm making plans now. I just make plans when I want to make plans. Mm hmm I don't have biological kids. I don't have a baby. I don't have someone to get a baby. I don't need a babysitter. Mm -hmm. I should take advantage of that. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Do what I want to do. Absolutely. And Cameron is supportive. He's always supported me. Mm -hmm. The girls are happy to see me when I'm there and I'm happy to see them. Sure. It's my life. Mm -hmm. It's your life. Uh, I want to kind of pull on one thing that you had mentioned about, you know, you said, you know, Cameron, my partner, he's got them. Right? Yeah. He's got his girls. He's got them. My partner who is a male, has the capacity to parent his children. Would you mind speaking on that a little bit? Not at all. This, the, this whole idea that 
women have to take care of men and take care of children and take care of everything else. And they have to do the dishes. They have to do all of this stuff is it's BS. It's, it's tiring. It's unrealistic. It's, it's not the way that people should live. And, you know, when, you know, let's say a hundred years ago, when men were never at home, women would do everything, but life was so different then. Mm -hmm. So we can't keep holding these values to women and men that are not conducive to our lifestyles nowadays. Mm -hmm. Cameron is, like I've said multiple times already, so intelligent. He knows when to feed his children. I mean, they're old enough now that they can talk, but when they weren't, you know, he says on a multiple, like on a regular basis, she's made it to 15, you know, like I've obviously done something right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's not my job. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into this relationship. Cameron never asked me to take care of his kids. He never said to me, I want to live with you only if you can take care of my kids. Right. He said, I want to live with you. I have two kids I have to take care of. Mm -hmm. It's my job. Mm -hmm. And it's, and he loves taking care of his kids. He loves being around them. Mm -hmm. I've never, thankfully I've never felt it, you know, a battle like, or like a competition between us, but he set the ground rules very early. Mm -hmm. And how important those kids are. Because mm -hmm. those kids didn't choose me. Mm -hmm. Cameron did. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's a lot of power in that. There is a lot of power in that. Yeah. There is a lot of power in that. And it, it speaks to, like, he invited you into this pre-existing life that mm -hmm. he had already created. So, you know, one thing that it's kind of that I've noticed can be kind of difficult for most stepmoms to wrap their minds around is that this family system existed before your relationship existed with that person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time when stepmoms get hung up in this thing, like uh, there's this, there's this thing that is kind of commonplace between stepmoms where we feel like we're an outsider. Yes. We feel like we're in, an intruder. All we the time. We feel like we're not welcome. Right. And it's less the fact that you're an intruder or you're not welcome. And it's more the fact that they have had a bond since birth that is pre that is predated the relationship that you have with your partner. And it doesn't speak to the amount of worth that you have showing up in that relationship. Mm -hmm. That person, your partner, chose you to be in a relationship with. And it doesn't have to be one or the other. It doesn't have to be my kids or you. And I was very guilty of that. I was very guilty of that when Seamus and I first started dating. I always felt like he was choosing mm -hmm. Kian over me. I felt like he was choosing his ex-wife over me because he had financial responsibilities. He had financial obligations, et cetera, et cetera. Has there ever been a time... In your relationship that you felt Cameron was choosing his pre-existing life, his first life over you, or have you always felt like he's opened up a space for you, even if it might not have been where you wanted it to be, or have you always felt like he chose you first? Um, you know, I've never, I mean, Cameron, Cameron loves me so much and I love him. I've never not felt like I was loved. Mm. His girls have pretty specific needs. And so, um, that I might answer that question a little differently. Okay. Because his girls require a lot more, um, attention health wise and things like that. So for me to feel like he wasn't putting his girls first that need medical attention on a regular basis would be, I'd be a pretty terrible person <laughs> if I felt that way. And it just is not naturally in my nature. I know one of the girls had to have uh, brain surgery uh, the first year we moved in. So we moved in in January, March, she had brain surgery. And I remember thinking, like, let me be at the hospital. But at, at that point, I was very taboo still, like my our relationship, even though we'd been together for years prior. Um, it was just a slow burn. And um, I remember, like close to begging Cameron, like, can I please come to the hospital? I want to be there. And what he said was so it's, and it might not be on, on topic, but he said, you're here and you're healthy. You need to stay healthy for me. I need to be 
in this situation in a hospital where my child is having brain surgery, I'm going to be coming home. I need someone to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, anyone else could have interpreted that as I'm stuck at home. I have nothing to do, whatever, whatever, all the stories we tell ourselves. The way that he put it was just so perfect in the sense it's like, man, he's so right. Mm -hmm. He needs something. Mm -hmm. I need to be that for him right now. So I was, you know, lucky enough that he explained it in a way that I, I would never feel like he was putting his daughter first. Mm -hmm. um, he puts us all first. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very lucky mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. Very lucky. Mm -hmm. um, I have had the opportunity and the fortune of have building relationships with stepmoms from across the world. Mm -hmm. And very often... There is some kind of a special dynamic or a unique dynamic, whether it is, you know, the stepkids have some sort of a mental illness, mm. some sort of a physical illness, some sort of combination of both. But it seems that no matter the step family, there always seems to be some kind of a complexity. Right. That makes it, that makes it like, oh, wow, I don't understand how you, how you live in your step family this way. But something I think is so amazing is that at the end of the day, most stepmoms go through a very, very, very similar path. They have a similar type of feeling. They have similar, whether it's your stepchild has been diagnosed with a mental illness or your stepchild has been diagnosed with a physical illness or your stepmom's kid or your stepmom, stepkid's mom dies, right? There's always seems oh, yeah. to be some layer of complexity that other stepmoms are like, wow, you know, I, I couldn't do what you're doing, but they think the same about us. Right. Um, and I wonder, has there been something along your stepmom journey that you're like, no one possibly could understand what it feels like to be in this situation with these set, this like set of circumstances, like this completely sets me apart. There's stepmoms. And then I have a completely different vantage point. Have you ever felt that way because of uh, your stepdaughter's medical needs? Or have you have you set yourself apart from other stepmoms? Or have you thought about it? You know, okay, so here's something. I Over the past six years, I knew, I knew what I was getting myself into. Uh, you know, Cameron was very transparent about their health, what I was signing up for. Mm -hmm. So over these years, I've prepared myself for anything. I did not get into this relationship thinking, being completely blind and naive to what's going to happen. Um, I mean, there are certainly things that blindsided me. Um, those things that blindsided me, though, that's just normal step family stuff. Mm -hmm. That's like, I want my mom and dad to be back together. <laughs> okay, what? Those are the things that I was like, I'm not ready for this. Right. I'm ready for you to go to the hospital at any moment. Right. I'm ready for you to take medication on a regular basis, but I'm not ready for you to not like my cooking. <laughs> what kind of kid doesn't like cauliflower pizza crust? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. So um, I, I have been able to really separate mm -hmm. that strong, strong attachment. And I've read... Over the past little bit, I've read um, step mom stories actually from uh, things that you have um, that I have access to, and just reading these these mom stories, how much they have to give their kids, how much they have to show up and be a parent for. A lot of these kids don't have moms, mm -hmm. or they don't have moms that are present or whatever. All of these things are happening. I'm very very grateful that these girls have a very capable mother in the line of work of taking care of kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been able to step back from the kid aspect and actually just take care of my relationship with Cameron mm -hmm. because, and take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Because if I think about children with a terminal disease or condition, I should say, um, it's shocking and it's terrible and it's tragic. And if I were to sit and think about that every single night as a stepmom with pretty much no power in health decisions at all or schooling or whatever, mm -hmm. I'd go nuts. Mm -hmm. I would go nuts. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't be here, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So where did you make this shift in your mindset to say, this is not my responsibility to stress over, or I choose not to stress over this? Like, what kind of work have you done on yourself personally to be able to detach yourself from, like you said, this gloom and doom and destruction and tragedy? Mm -hmm. How have you been able to uh, fortify yourself, I guess, build a moat around yourself, build your own self-resilience, build your own skills that you need to stand on your own two feet and, you know, be that rock for your partner if and when that time comes that you need to be that rock for your partner? Mm -hmm. It's happened over the past few years, I would say, after over the past four years, I would say, like, just recently have I actually feel like I've arrived in that mindset, and it still kind of creeps up on me. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard not to feel angry for a long time, or mad, or spiteful. Um, I'm still human, um, but Cameron over the past, you know, have, the past four years of, of living together would say things like, it's... It's not your problem to deal with. It you don't, you're reacting is your problem. And he would say it in the kindest way, but it's true. The way that I react is to someone saying something to me is my problem, mm -hmm. not my stepkids' problems. Mm -hmm. And f let's think about that for a sec. They're kids. That's a kid. I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. Lots of times they don't even know how to emote properly. So if I'm going to get all bent out of shape because a nine-year-old that's upset that her parents have divorced, which is tragedy on its own, if I'm going to get upset about that, that's my freaking problem. Mm -hmm. And so over the, over the course of four years, that's when this has changed. Just even just recently, like over the past couple months, I was like, man, do you know what? I got to stop this. Mm -hmm. I need to stop. Mm -hmm. It's killing me. Mm -hmm. It's making me sad. It's making me upset. You know, the, it's the buildup of anxiety of when we have them on the weekend. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm literally getting older as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. So I have to stop this. So what kind of tools do you have in your tool bag now that have been the most beneficial to you to stop it? I read a lot. I walk my dogs a lot. Um, I work out every morning at 5.30. If I don't work out... Um, usually Sundays I won't, Sundays I'll do yoga or something mm -hmm. and clearing my mind and burning that off is like, I can't, I can't even express how beneficial it is for my health, my brain health, mm -hmm. mental health, I think is what they call that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, you, you can't even, you can't measure it in money. These things and listening to Cameron have really, really helped. And paying attention to the girls. Mm -hmm. Paying attention to how they react to me. Mm -hmm. Like being more present is, is so much more valuable than people give it credit for. Mm -hmm. Paying attention. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's funny. My, my word of 2020 is presence. Mm. You know, being in the moment. Past is gone. The future's not here yet. I need to be right here right now in this moment. Um... And it's interesting that, that you bring that, that word up, synchronicities, not a coincidence. Hmm. So have you noticed that by incorporating this more mindfulness and more presence into your life inside the walls of your step family, have you noticed any impact on you know your physical health, any impact on your business, any impact in the way that you show up in other areas of your life that just your step family? I can't even begin to tell you, like, when you're happier, you do better. So... I'm waking up every day with, with gratitude and energy and the drive and nothing, I have no physical, like, it's not like I'm trying to lose 20 pounds. It has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. I've always been quite healthy. It's, it's doing these things, setting these, these routines for myself have literally given my, my everyday life a boost for, to, to the stars. I can't even tell you. So my energy level is up because I'm excited about things again. I, I'm no longer letting my mind be weighed down by things that were said or things that were done or not done. And I just let it go. Mm -hmm. And I stopped letting these issues be the forefront of my brain and I start, I just shifted. And so in my business, I felt like it's not in a rut, but I, I, I felt like other businesses were starting to copy the hair and makeup industry that I had created. You know, we were the first beauty team in Edmonton um, to have five people. Then we had 10, 15, 20. Now we have 30 plus. Um, 
And so these people were catching up to me. And then all of a sudden I was looking at their websites and it's all the same. Like nothing is different. They've got 12 people. We've got 30. Sure, we have a bigger team. They're charging the exact same amount of prices. Our pictures look the same. Nothing's different. And then when I talked to you, had our coaching session, you know, you, you pulled these things out of me that was like, oh my God, aha, aha. Like these light bulbs, literally like my house lit up. And that gives people, we need drive. We need something to look forward to. We need to feel like we have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And going back to being a stepmom at the beginning, at the four years, I need to feel like I'm doing something good mm -hmm. for these kids. Mm -hmm. That's not right. Mm -hmm. They don't need that. I don't need that. They already have a good life. So anyway, to the business. So that's when I, you know, I decided to take the business into a different angle. You and I decided, you know, we, we helped each other, I guess. Um, and then I just ran with it and it doesn't take much to motivate me. Um, I just need like a little push. Um, you know, so that in my business life now I'm more excited. Now I've got these things to look forward to. Right. Now I have more conversations that I can have with Cameron. You know, he was working at a town. It was dark days for a while. Working at a town, he was never home. I was by myself the whole time. Started going out way more. Started drinking more. You know, because I'm just like, this sucks. I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so everything, when, when your mind gets into that like stagnant, dark place, everything follows. Mm -hmm. And so once I picked myself up out of that... You know, Cameron and I now have discussions, healthy discussions. Not that we never didn't, but we have healthy discussions that end in a positive way. Right. And I have these beautiful blooming relationships all over with different companies and different people. And I have compassion. And I feel like because I'm happier in this mind set that I have created for myself... I feel more for people. I have more empathy. And so that's where I, my experience is heightened at a hockey game. Cause I'm like, man, look at how fun this is. Right. Cause I'm happier. Cause I stopped letting myself feel shitty. Right. It's literally just that easy. It is. It's just that easy. You literally just have to choose not to feel shitty. Yeah. You literally just have to choose to feel good. Yeah. And you would never know. Like, I mean, until I, you know, until I'm at the height of like my happiness now, I would never say that I was sad before or unhappy because I wouldn't still wouldn't describe myself as unhappy. You would have seen me in, over the past four years or however long. I've never really changed, but something inside of me had changed. Um, and whatever the cause of that was, mm -hmm. it uh, getting into a routine, changing my mindset not getting anxious about seeing my stepchildren, not letting the past control the present because that was a big thing. I was like, well, yeah, but two years ago, right? so-and-so said, right. how dumb is that? That's so dumb. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> I think it's really challenging for people. Everyone has a story. Everyone has experiences that have molded who they are. And it's like, a lot of the time we hear this thing that's like, you know, change your mindset, change your life. Right. Right. Stop living in the past. And people are like, okay, but how? Yeah. Right. It is hard. Okay, but how? Yeah. Right. And so, like, from, what, from my experience, it's one thing to know it cognitively. Yes. From a cerebral perspective, and there's another thing to feel it. There's another oh, thing to step into it. There's another thing to wake up every day in that feeling of gratitude. Because you can say to yourself, till you're blue in the face, I need to wake up in gratitude today. But waking up in gratitude and choosing to be in gratitude, one is a thinking action, one is a feeling action. Mm -hmm. And and I think most people get hung up in this thing of like, I know I shouldn't be living in my past. Yes. I know I shouldn't be there. I, but how? Right. Yeah. But that how? Be, that but how? For a long time. Mm -hmm. For a long time. And I hate, and you know, Cameron would say, man, you are a different person when you walk through that door and we have the girls. Mm -hmm. You're a different person. And I'm like, I fucking know. Mm -hmm. I know I am. Mm -hmm. And it is killing me. Mm -hmm. You know, the girls might see it a little bit, but Cameron sees it the most because sure. he knows me the most. Sure. And so it was, it would tear me up inside. And I'm like, why? I am not a negative person. 
Why am I behaving this way? Mm -hmm. Why can't I let it go? And so, you know, I've done yoga for years and years and years. I would say that that background really helps with being mindful in my current day. Um, all of the, I don't want to say preaching, but you know, the, the sessions and the classes that you go to and all of the things that you hear them say, let it go, let it go. And you're exactly right. <laughs> okay. But how? Right. And it, act, but it actually does, you do get to a point and hopefully I hope that anyone that feels that they can't let something go, that they will get to a point where it just, it's like letting a, a ship off to sea. Mm -hmm. Like, see a lab, never, actually. See you never. See you never. Smell you later. Smell you later. <laughs> because it's, that was it. I, I, I vividly remember Cameron saying to me, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. And it was like trauma. Mm -hmm. It was trauma that would happen to me. It was like PTSD. It was like, but, but this used to happen all the time. Right. It would be very tense and, you know, mm -hmm. this would get said and I would feel crappy and, you know, I was holding on to that. Mm -hmm. Years after it stopped happening. Right. And bless his heart, he stuck by me. I really wasn't that bad. <laughs> I really wasn't that bad. But I do think that it's such a difference in, in who I am naturally. Um, it happens to the best of us, though. Mm -hmm. We're all just trying to make it. We're all just trying to make it. We're all just trying to make it. Yeah. We're all just trying to make it. Stepkids, our partners, ex-wives, our partners. Totally. Everyone's just trying to make it. And when we make this leap and open our hearts up and come at the world from a place of compassion mm -hmm. and recognize that everybody's just trying to make it, if somebody's acting in a way, like when Cameron said, when the girls are there and you walk through the door, you're in this different place energetically and he can feel that off of you. It had nothing to do with those girls. No, it not had, at all. It had nothing to do with their mom. It had nothing to do with Cameron. That was a you. That was a you thing. Totally. And since you were able to recognize that and you were able to step into that and say, okay, what is going on with me? What is going on with me? Because I'm not going to make two little girls responsible for how I feel. I'm not going to make their mom responsible for how I feel. I'm not going to make two years ago responsible for how I feel. Today, I'm going to choose to make myself responsible for how I feel. And I choose to let it go. This is a shift lots of people want to be able to make. But again, they say, but how? Yeah, it takes time. It takes time. And, and you know what? You got to really want it. Just like anything. You, if you want to make a change, you have to want it. And you have to stick to it. Mm. You know, if you're 300 pounds overweight and your cholesterol's through the roof and you've got diabetes, if you keep reaching for the fast food and the chips, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Even if you keep telling yourself you want to get healthier, it doesn't matter. You have to make physical changes. If getting up at the crack of dawn before everyone else so you can have two hours to yourself, peace and quiet, you can do something good for yourself, you can read. If, if, if it takes that... To be where I am, I'll do that every day for the rest of my life, hands down. Mm -hmm. No matter where I am in the world, because mm -hmm. it's it's brought my life and my relationship with Cameron and the girls. It's light years ahead, mm -hmm. light years. Mm -hmm. It's a rut you don't want to get stuck in. If you could go back, if you could go back and have a conversation with yourself six years ago, mm -hmm. what is the number one Ooh. piece of advice that you would give yourself? You can't be perfect. Mm. I'm a makeup artist. I draw teeny tiny micro straight lines for a living. I put lashes on the smallest little hairs you've ever seen. My profession is making a look perfect. Right. Photo perfect. And I have always been that way. I equate it to my success in my business, to whatever it is out there that I'm successful at. It's, it is detrimental to a step family though. It's detrimental. Mm -hmm. Especially if they have a loving mom. <laughs> Especially. Because they don't need another mom. Mm -hmm. Even if I am their friend. Even if I don't discipline them ever. Which I don't, for the record. I never discipline them. That's Cameron's job. If I never do that... I'm just a benefit to their life, which I want them to be a benefit to my life. Mm -hmm. I want them to be a beautiful addition, just the same way that I could be for them. Mm -hmm. Whatever that looks like. What without expectation, like. without thinking that they should show up in this way to validate what you're doing totally. or vice versa. 
just allowing each other to coexist in your personal selves, in your own human experience, coexist. Yeah. Without judging where that other person is at or saying, you're not showing up for me in the way that I need you to. That's conditional love. Mm -hmm. Right. But saying we can coexist here. If you have, if you have a bad day, that's okay. I'm still here for you. Mm -hmm. Right. If I have a bad day, that's okay because I know you're still here for me. That's unconditional love. It's, yeah. I, um, even labels make a big deal, mm -hmm. are a big deal to people. You know, the youngest, um, Cameron's youngest girl is, um, delayed mentally. So she's, you know, she's behind quite a fair bit, more than you would notice, uh, physically to look at her. And we were sitting on the couch one day watching a movie and she was watching a movie and there was an evil stepmom in the movie. So the stepmom was just running rampant on this, this child's life, ruining this kid's life. And you could see, like I could feel the fear in her. And this is early on too, the fear. She was like, oh my God. And she turned and looked at me and said, are you going to be my stepmom? And I said, what does that mean to you? Mm. What does a stepmom mean to you? And you know what she said? It means that you're my mom. And I said, then no, I'm not your stepmom. I'm not. And you, because you already have a mom. And so even to this day, she still is not comfortable calling me her stepmom. She doesn't like when kids or, or anyone calls her my stepdaughter for that reason. Because she's been conditioned to think that this is a terrible situation that she is in. So everyone else must think it's terrible. We've all now, we're conditioned to think that these step families are the worst possible thing to happen to a child or an adult. Right. Oh my God, you have stepkids? How hard is that? <sighs> Not hard at all. A couple things here. But first of all, I just want to talk about the these labels that you brought up. So... Mm -hmm. When we started our conversation, you called yourself a pseudo wife mm. and now you are saying like that there was kind of this bump with stepmoms because of the Wicked Stepmom show, which is another conversation for another day. But I wonder how much, uh, how much importance do you personally give to titles? How much to personally do you define yourself by a title, by a label, like... Do you, think, do you think that because you and Cameron are not officially married, does that make your relationship any less valid? Do you think that because the girls will or will not call you their stepmom, their bonus mom, their whatever title they want to give you, does that feel to you, does that feel like it diminishes the importance of your role with them or not? Yes. Mm. 100%. Mm. Cameron is not a label person though. So to him, it means nothing. Um... But um, in the world, society looks, you're not a real couple until you're married, right? And so I work with weddings. <laughs> I work with 300 weddings over a, in a year. And um, so these labels that we've created, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to not be affected by it though, because I have no idea what the future holds. Cameron and I may never get married. We just literally might wake up one day and be like, oh my God, we forgot. That doesn't make me any less of a step parent to the girls. I'll always be in their life. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that outside influences to them, though, um, really have a big, a big impact on the word step. Mm -hmm. I think that um, they've been really taught by many people that you have one mom and one dad, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You can't have any more. There's no room. And so I don't come from a family like that. Um, but lots of people are raised that way now. You know, they, they're not raised to trust strangers or to look outside of their family for love. And um, extra love, I should say. And so, yeah, I do. On a regular basis, I feel not as involved, we'll say. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's lots of, like, I would never pick them up from school, for say. It's just not something I would do. Because that's what works for our 
family. Right. But it doesn't make me feel... I mean, at first I was like, what do you mean I can't? I don't get it. Because in my previous relationship, he also had kids, and I would do all of that kind of stuff. Right. But that re- that relationship crashed and burned faster than it started. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. That kind of stuff is... It's minutia. It's small. Small, small, small details that many, many stepmoms can sit and just seethe over. Mm-hmm. I chose not to. Mm-hmm. Enough waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> thinking about these things. Downloading meditation apps immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, do you have any final words of wisdom for our stepmom listeners? It's, it's really, really important to be true to yourself and not sweat the small, small things. There's many books that many people can read, not on step parenting, but not sweating the small stuff. There's a book called that mm-hmm. from years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there's better literature about it now, but... It's, uh, it's imperative for, for one's mental health and happiness to really, really look at what you're doing. Look at what you're saying to your kids. Look at what you're saying to your husband. Look at what you're saying to yourself. Oh, it's, you only get one life. You only get one life. If you're going to sit and choose to be unhappy for the rest of your life, do it alone. And don't involve kids. Don't involve a husband. That's just trying his hardest to please you and his kids. Mm -hmm. Choose happiness and you will choose the best life ever. If you want, you know, it's, it's hard and it takes a long time to get there, but if you you need help, then get help and, and be that way because you could be giving up a really, really great situation if you choose to be unhappy forever. Kids are a bonus. They're a benefit. They're not a burden. They're beautiful little souls. And you can find love in every single one of them. Mm -hmm. You just have to look real hard sometimes. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're the most darling things ever, you know. But it's, uh, it's important. You get, you only get one shot at it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Heather, for joining us today. Uh, If our listeners would like to find you, connect with you, where is the best place for them to do that? So I own Blush Artistry in Edmonton, Alberta. We service the whole world um, with hair and makeup. Uh, We have a studio in Sherwood Park, Alberta. um, And we offer hair, makeup, cuts and colors, brows, that kind of thing, spray tans, all that, all this stuff, beauty related. Um, you can find us at www.blushartistry.ca. Um, and you can find us on Instagram, Blush Artistry, M-U-A for Makeup Artist. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And I don't have my wine glasses on, otherwise I would say cheers to that, but we'll just put on a... joining us this week and we will see you next week same place same time bye everyone (laughs) that was fun that was fun i hope this episode got your wheels turning and showed you just how powerful you are i would invite you to take 30 seconds and tap subscribe to this podcast when you subscribe to the podcast then rest assured you will never miss an episode And in no time, spinning your wheels will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the absolute world to me if after you subscribed, you jumped on over and left me a five-star review and better yet, a written review. I am on a mission to let every mom and stepmom know that you can create the life of your dreams. And I need your help to change the world. The world is needs us. Thank you so much for subscribing and leaving me a five-star review. I will see you next week, same time, same place. For more behind the scenes action and to get really up close and personal with me and our beautiful step family, jump on over to Instagram and follow me at the step queen. Don't be shy. Send me a DM, tag me in your posts, tag me in your stories. Let me know what you're up to and what about the podcast has been blowing your mind. I cannot wait to get to know you better. And Instagram is my jam. I love you so much. I love you so much. 
make it rain, girlfriend. <laughs>